This message is one that I've wanted to present for some time. I did a portion of it a while back, but it's um, an idea that is going to help us understand a little bit more about <clears throat> how God interacts. And so the title is God Looks Down. And it's a blessing to be able to share from the Word about God, a subject that I hold very dear to my heart. I look forward to the time where I will be able to thank God personally for all that he has done in my life. And I'm hoping for all of us to be there, faithful unto death. Amen? Amen. God looks down. Now, I am certainly not deistic in my thinking. Deistic would be that God has created, started this world in motion, and then just left it to continue. No, God is personal, and he interacts with this world. He takes care of that which he has created. He is not a God that has just left us alone to figure out how to live and what to do and where to be and where to go without his direction. But we're going to try to ask a few questions with this Bible study. How does that work? Notice, God looks down. Deuteronomy 26, verse 15. Moses wrote, Look down from thy holy habitation. From heaven. Okay, so where is God's holy habitation? It's in heaven. And what's he supposed to do? He's supposed to look down. Look down from thy holy habitation, from heaven, and bless thy people Israel and the land which thou hast given us. As thou swearest unto our fathers, a land that floweth with milk and honey. So right there we know, according to this verse, that God is in heaven. He's to be looking down, and it's that, that's where he lives, his holy habitation. Now, there, there is a man that wrote years ago. He actually died in 1881. His name is James White. And as he wrote this short study called The Personality of God, one of the thoughts he brought up, which was really good, he, he asked the question, is God in heaven like Jesus told us that he was when he said, our Father, which art in heaven. So if God is in heaven, then if God is everywhere, then everywhere must be heaven. And I remember thinking that at first, and that just went right over my head, like, what does that mean? That's too much, way too much. It, it didn't click. And then I realized when I said it a few times more, I read it over and over again, that thought, if God is in heaven and God is everywhere, everywhere is heaven. But that cannot be. Everywhere is not heaven. And so God, according to this verse, is in his holy habitation in heaven. I think that's pretty interesting. Notice Psalm 14, verse 2. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. So God is interested to find out if somebody down here is wanting to know about him. He really cares. He's actually looking. Now you have to ask the question, how is he looking? We don't have time for that study. But if you go through the Bible and you learn about the eyes of the Lord... You realize the angels are very connected to that idea. The angels are used as God's eyes. You can see many times in the Bible. It's pretty clear. It's interesting. Psalm 53, verse 2. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. So now this is 52. David wrote it twice, two different times. What about Psalm 80, verse 14? Return, we beseech thee, O God, the God of hosts. By the way, who are the hosts? Angels. Angels. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. Now the vine would be, of course, the children of Israel. You can see that in Isaiah chapter 5. There was a wild vine that was growing up and God called it uh, my people. So... <clears throat> They're asking God to return and to look down from heaven. 
Look at chapter 85, verse 11 in the Psalms. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. So truth springs out of the earth. Who is the truth? That's the Son of God, right? Jesus. So truth is the one that springs out of the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. Do you know that Christ demonstrated Christ's, uh, his Father's righteousness? Notice what it says. I'm going to go to a different verse here. This is 2 Corinthians uh, 5.21. For he, that would be the Father, hath made him, that would be the Son, to be sin for us, who, the Son, knew no sin, that we, his followers, might be made the righteousness of God in the Son. So we're, we're made the righteousness of God. So when, it, when the Bible says in Matthew 5, 48, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect, how are we made perfect like that? Through his Son, yes, of course, it is through his Son. It has nothing to do with us becoming better as we live. A friend of mine says, it's like us becoming deader. So now, the less you are in your life, the less self you have that you're holding on to, the more of Christ and his spirit can be there. The less of self, the more of Christ. <clears throat> and so you don't become better in order to be saved, you become deader. Does that make sense? So now, God the Father was looking down from heaven while his son, the truth, was springing up out of the earth. That's a pretty interesting verse. Look at Psalm 102, verse 19. For he hath looked down from heaven, or from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth. So where is he? He's in the sanctuary. And he's beholding the earth as a result. Isaiah 63, 15. Look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Again, God the Father's looking down from heaven. Why would he need to look down from heaven? We've, we've read all these verses about God the Father looking down from heaven. Isn't he everywhere? Can't he just look around? Well, according to the Bible, he looks down from a place where he is, heaven. And so God is in heaven. That's why Jesus said, pray, our Father, which art in heaven. It's because he believed, just like David believed, and just like Moses believed, that God is in heaven. And he looks down from there to see us. Now, this continues here in verse 15. Look down from heaven and behold from thy habita the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength, the sounding of thy bowels and of thy mercies toward me? Are they restrained? So he didn't hear his voice. He was asking him to look down. In Lamentations 3, 49, Mine eye trickleth down and ceaseth not without any intermission. In other words, I'm crying for the children that are lost. I'm trying for the, crying for the city that has been destroyed. It says in verse 50, Till the Lord look down and behold from heaven. So Jeremiah understood that as long as he cried, as long as he was uh, pleading for his people without intermission, the Lord was there listening. And he would do it until the Lord looked down from heaven. Do you know the Bible says that every tear that we shed, God keeps in a bottle? Did you know that? Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? Isn't that precious? <clears throat> He's got a lot of bottles. <laughs> but God takes notice of every single thing we do. Now the question is how? It is symbolic, of course. But the question is, how does God take notice? How? It would be through his agents. I believe it doesn't have to be only, but it is certainly described as through the angels. Absolutely. So now, as we continue on, 
from heaven. Now, we're going to see a different phrase here because we looked at um, God was looking down now from heaven. Exodus 20, verse 22. The Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from where? From heaven. Joshua 10, verse 11. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Haran, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Ezekah. And they died, and were more, they were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. So the Lord had slain these people with great stones from heaven. I can see that I don't have a verse here in this study, so I'm going to go to Genesis 19. Then the Lord rained down upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Now, wait a minute. The Lord, who was there on the earth around Sodom and Gomorrah with two angels? Who was that? Jesus. That was Jesus Christ. So the Lord here on the earth rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord that was in heaven. Interesting. And by the way, that is the Yahweh, and that is Yahweh as well. Jehovah and Jehovah. Jehovah and Jehovah. And two lords. That's right, exactly. Now, we know that in the writings of Sister White, she says this. Jehovah is the name given to Christ. You can look it up for yourself. I can't. I could look it up on my phone if I wanted to, if I needed to, if you needed a reference. Who needs a reference? If nobody does, then I will just continue on. Okay. So, 2 Samuel twenty two fourteen, The Lord thundered. From where? From heaven. And the Most High uttered his voice. So wait a minute. Are you saying that thunder is equated with uttering his voice? Yes, of course. It's even in the New Testament. In John chapter 12, remember when Jesus was saying and praying, God, glorify thou your, thyself in your Son. And he thundered, saying, I have glorified thee, and I will do it again. Remember that? And people thought, wait a minute, what's going on? There's thunder around here. But in reality, it was the Father speaking, equated with thunder. 1 Corinthians 21, 26, David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the Lord, and he answered him, where? From heaven, by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. He didn't answer him by coming down and being right there. He answered him from heaven. So where is God? God is in heaven. Where does God answer our prayers from? From heaven. How does he do it? That's a good question. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 21. Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven. And when thou hearest, forgive. So wait a minute. Here Solomon is praying for the temple. I want you to hear these prayers. And I want you to answer from where? From your dwelling place, from heaven. And when you hear us from where you are in heaven, forgive us. So how does God hear? How does God see? How does he answer prayers? Good questions. Search it for yourself. 2 Chronicles 6, 23. Then hear thou from heaven and do and judge thy servants by requiting the wicked, by recompensing his way upon his own head and by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. So of course it was from heaven that when he was hearing. <clears throat> 2 Chronicles 6, 27, same prayer. Then hear thou from heaven and forgive. Forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel. When thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk and send rain upon thy land, which thou hast given unto the people from an inheritance. Continuing that prayer. Then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and render unto every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou knowest the hearts of the children of men. Question, how does he know the hearts of the children of men? Good question. Go search it out. 
Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble thyselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear, from where? From heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their, heal their land. <clears throat> now, I'll just say right now that in this study of Genesis 28, verse 12, I'm going to go to the context of that one and we're going to see a couple of verses ahead of time. This was Jacob. He went to Beersheba and he went to Haran, toward Haran. He lighted upon a certain place and tarried there at night. Behold, the sun was set, or because the sun was set. He took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down to, take, to uh, sleep in that place. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it. What is it? That's the ladder. So that can't be Christ, because Christ is represented as the ladder. He said that himself in John 1, 51, remember? You will see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. But in the original dream, it was upon the ladder. So we know that Jesus understood himself to be the ladder. So then Jacob was dreaming and he said, Behold, the Lord, that's the Father, stood above it, the ladder, and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. Question. When God the Father was revealed to Jacob in this dream, where was he? He was in heaven. Looking, he was standing upon it. Right? On the ladder. He was standing at the, the top of it. And he was speaking in this dream, saying, I'm the one leading you. I'm the one blessing you. I'm the one going to do all these things. How did he do that? How did God the Father do that for Jacob? It was through his son, exactly. God the Father has never come down to this earth to reveal himself to people. Never a single time. That's why John, um, I'll read it here. John 1.18 says, No man hath seen God at how many times? Any time. The only begotten Son, which is of the bosom of the Father, he's the one that has revealed or declared him. But nobody has seen God. And the prophets don't contradict. So therefore, somehow we're not understanding if we think that somebody in the Old Testament saw God the Father. No, it was the Son declaring the Father. That's what this verse is saying. So now what we have here is that this dream that Jacob was given was showing that God the Father would do all these things for Jacob, but it was through his Son. Now, we also know that the Son... And according to his own uh, record of the biblical history, did a lot of things through angels, right? And so the idea is that God the Father is above in heaven speaking to the Jacob in this dream. And we know that he did all things through the Son. But what is ascending and descending upon that ladder? Angels. angels. So we have God the Father... Standing in heaven, speaking to Jacob, and it's because of the Son that is reached from heaven to earth, and is by the ministry of angels that this communication is open. That's what's happening in this dream, in this vision. And the way that this man Jacob in this dream had a vision was given, according to the Bible, by angels. Very interesting. So let's go back to here. Here from heaven and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal, heal their land. Nehemiah said a similar thing. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai, and spakest with them from heaven, and gavest them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments. And so now what's interesting is, it says that he came down upon Mount Sinai, but he spoke to them from heaven. Now, you could say that there are three heavens in the Bible, and I wonder if this one isn't referring to the first heaven. Now, there's the heaven that's described wherein we have our atmosphere, we breathe, and that's where the birds fly. There's another heaven where the sun, the moon, and the stars are, 
And then there's the third heaven, which is called paradise, according to the New Testament, where God the Father is. So I'm, I'm thinking that because God was there coming down upon Mount Sinai, he was lifted up, he was in the first heaven. And so from heaven, you gave, God the Father gave uh, judgments, true laws, good statutes, and commandments. How did God the Father give those commandments and statutes? Through his son, exactly. Because the Bible says no man has heard his voice at any time or seen his shape. Remember that? We looked at that one earlier today in John 5, 37. <coughs> Nehemiah 9, 27. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies who vexed them. And in the time of their trouble, when thou cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. He gave them saviors. And I would think that this time in um, Nehemiah, he's referring to the judges. So, but I stand corrected if that's not entirely true. So he gave them saviors to save them out of the hand of their enemy. But after they had rest, they did evil again before thee. Therefore, leftest thou them, or you left them, in the hand of their enemies, so that they had the dominion over them, the enemies did. Yet when they returned and cried unto thee, Thou heardest them from heaven, and many times didst thou deliver them according to thy mercies. Of course, from heaven. How? Standing there at the top of the ladder, which is through Christ, and angels ascending and descending. Psalm thirty-three, thirteen: The Lord looketh down from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. 57, verse 3. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Selah, God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Of course, where did he send it from? From heaven. Psalm 76, verse 8. Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. So we know that uh, judgment is important. And so, of course, in heaven, God has heard uh, judgment. Psalm 80, verse 14, Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. We'd already seen that one before, but notice what it says. Lo, a voice from heaven was saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. That was when Jesus Christ was baptized. Where was God? In heaven. That's what it says. If God would have showed up when his Son was baptized, what would have happened to humanity? They would have been wiped out. God is a consuming fire, the Bible teaches in Hosea, um, Hebrews chapter 12. I think it's verse 28. Hebrews 12, 28. Uh, let's see. There, 29. Our God is a consuming fire. What does it consume? He consumes anything contrary to his will. So like sin, for example, if we're cherishing sin... We're going to be consumed by the brightness of His coming through the person of His Son because we have chosen sin that, will, that cannot exist in the sight of a holy God. So when Jesus was baptized, the Father was there saying, Thou art my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased, according to both Matthew and Mark. It was a voice from heaven. Same thing happened in Luke 3. The Holy Ghost descended in a, in a bodily shape like a dove. And it, it was upon him, and a voice came from heaven, which saith, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. This is the one I was talking about before when it sounded like thunder. John 12, 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. So th four times in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Not the four times, because there was only... Th one time in Matthew, Mark, and Luke that it was referred to in the baptism. But here in, in uh, John chapter 12, this is another time he spoke. Every single time the authors clarified it was from heaven. An interesting fact. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So even God's wrath is revealed from heaven. His love is revealed from heaven. 
He sends and communicates with his people from heaven. He hears from heaven. He does all these wonderful things from heaven. But God is not everywhere because everywhere would be heaven. God is in heaven. And from heaven, he does all these wonderful things. How was it, how was it described to Jacob? It was Christ who was the ladder that reached to heaven and to earth. And upon that ladder, there was the angels ascending and descending. That is God's vision to Jacob, the father of all of Israel. So that he gave that vision so that Jacob would be able to describe to every single one of his 12 sons, I had a vision and I saw God in heaven and there was this ladder. Upon that ladder, God had enabled angels to ascend and descend. What are angels? They are messengers with what? Messages of what? Assurance and love, of care, of blessings, of everything. They are angels that excel in strength. And so everything that we're reading about, about the Father in heaven, what does he do and how does he do it? He does all the things described by and through the ministry of his son and through the ministration of angels. It's incredible when you get this concept in your head, you realize like, wow, I had given it to a third being called God the Spirit. And I thought like God did everything through his spirit. Well, yeah, you can say that God does everything through his spirit, but what does that mean? It means those that follow his will, having his mind and are willing to follow the directions that he gives, they fulfill his will. And they are ministering the spirit, the mind, the ideas of God. Those would be his holy angels and of course ourselves included if in fact we're willing to follow the instructions of our Father which is in heaven. You see? Hebrews 12, 25. See that you refuse not him that speaks for if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth which would be the Son much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven. Who would that be? The Father. 2 Peter 1.18 And this voice which came from heaven, Peter describes, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. And we know that that's when Jesus had said, I'm sorry, the Father had said, this is my beloved Son. Peter, he doesn't clarify that that time that the Father spoke when Peter and James and John were up in the mountain with Jesus, that it was metaphorical. He didn't clarify that. He just simply says, we heard that when we were with him in that holy mountain. It was holy, why? Because God was there. He was surrounded by clouds. Clouds represent angels. And he wasn't there in person with James, John, and Peter because they would have been wiped out completely. He was still surrounded. And we know that he was speaking from heaven, this voice which came from heaven. So now that is five times that the Bible in the New Testament describes the Father's voice being spoke, spoken and every single time it was from heaven. So do we think though that because God is in heaven, he doesn't have the ability to minister, to love, to care for, to take care of us? No, he is involved. He is completely involved in every single thing we do. He knows it. He hears your cries. He answers your prayers. He speaks from heaven. He ministers through his son, which is the ladder, and the angels that ascend and descend upon that ladder. God is every bit involved in your life. And we can praise him for this. That's what the Bible's describing. God is in heaven. And one day, I want to be there in heaven with him. What about you? Everywhere is not heaven. We are not in heaven yet. We're close because we're in Australia, right? Is that a better way to put it? Okay. <laughs> we can have a taste of heaven, absolutely. We can know that God ministering to us is what we're going to experience all through the ages, the ceaseless ages of eternity future. And I praise God, who right now is in heaven, who, through the ministration of his Son and angels, can hear what we're saying right now. Amen. I praise the Father, and I praise his Son, and I thank them both for the ministry of the angels. I'm not going to praise the angels, but I will be thankful for what they do. Amen. So let us humble ourselves before our God, which is in heaven, and be thankful for what he has done for us and even through us because he wants us to be ministers 
just as much as he wants his son and angels to be ministers. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, we do ask that you would please continue to lead and guide and bless us in all things. We thank you that you are so involved. We know according to your Bible, you are in heaven. You're a great distance from us, but you're very near. You're near through your son and through those that are ministering spirits, according to Hebrews 1, 9, or 7 rather. And we ask that you'd please continue to help us to understand the way that we can be ministered to by you. We've seen a little bit of your order, a little bit of your government, how you work. And we want to fit into this picture. We want to be worked by your will. We want to be able to fit into the ministry that you have going on for those that are lost. And we pray that you please open the doors that we can understand what it is that your spirit is saying to the churches so that we know what to say when we're asked questions or brought into a tight situation where we need to have answers. Thank you for your word. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.